Good day, my name is Kirill Slavyov and I'm presenting our work integrating flow plans into hedonic models for end price appraisal. First, it is important to understand the challenges and peculiarities of real estate market valuation and to understand what is the role of hedonic models in alleviating some of these issues. Real estate is a heterogeneous market of long-lived and infrequently traded assets. Imagine that you got a new job proposition in Berlin, so you're looking for a new place to stay. You are equally interested in two different properties. One is in the city center and in a skyscraper, and it provides a magnificent view on the city. And another one is smaller, further away from the city center, but it is closer to your new place of work, and you are unsure which one is best for you. This example illuminates two important factors from real estate markets. First, there is a large number of price determinants that might not be evident, and more importantly, might not have market price set on them. And second, in the real estate markets, there is a direct competition between non-similar units. Together, this results in harder valuation for the particular dwelling spaces. And that brings me to the hedonic models. Hedonic models are the de facto standard for real estate valuation. They study marginal changes in target variables, such as the rent or rent per meter squared, depending on the variables of interest. But more importantly, they are not constrained just by structured parameters. In fact, they can be extended with almost any information source, and they put a great weight on heterogeneity of the market and the effects of individual characteristics. In the case of real estate, those attributes can be divided into structural and locational parameters. Structural parameters look inside the apartment, for example, how many rooms it has and how old it is, and locational look outside for the factors such as the view or the amount of sunlight per day. This flexibility makes hedonic models particularly suitable for the highly heterogeneous real estate markets, but could also be detrimental since you can't always compare scientific words, since some hedonic models might not have the parameters from the other ones. And that brings me to an important point. Current hedonic models disregard a very important data source that is available for every apartment that is currently existing on the market. I'm referring to the real estate floor plans. Real estate floor plan is a top down view of the property, and it contains unique and complex information that might be hard to place in other data sources. For your consideration, please look at the right. Here we have two floor plans that represent apartments with similar or almost identical structural attributes, but just by looking at them, one can see that the layouts are different and the one on the right is more expensive per square meter. Of course, both of them have three rooms and a single balcony, but the one on the right has multiple entry points to that balcony. And when you enter the apartment, you are instantly greeted with a big and spacious living room, while on the left, you have to go through a corridor and at that left 90 degrees. This information is universally as available at the earliest stages of the project existence. Even before the apartment is built, we already have floor plans with the mentioned information that can be extracted. And this brings me to the research question. Can the apartment floor plans on online real estate platforms enhance hedonic rent price appraisal? To answer this, this question, we gathered a unique data set of more than 15,000 apartment listings from across the Berlin. We have taken them from the largest German online real estate platform, Immobilien Scout 24, and they were listed between the middle of 2017 and the end of 2019. As a dependent variable, we used the real estate standard, rent per meter squared in euros, and the absolute rent in euros. On the right hand side, you can see a summary statistic table of the key variables, which I would describe now. Moving on to the explanatory variables, we have six structured features, which include area in square meters, number of rooms, the floor, the top floor of the building, distance from the city center in kilometers that we constructed ourselves, and the year in which the apartment was built. Additionally, we have constructed 12 locational dummies, one dummy for each city district. And we also have 30 structural and contractual dummies, which may include such information as availability of parking, allowance for pets, or the heating type. Last but not least, we have a floor plan image corresponding to each apartment in our data set. These images illustrate the spread and the heat map 
of each apartment contained within our data. As one can see, generally more expensive apartments are concentrated near the city center and also in some particular districts of Berlin. For both of these parameters, we control in our study. And that brings me to the methodology. We propose a two-stage deep learning approach to determine the hedonic price of the apartment floor plans. Stage one is the hedonic regression to calculate the adjusted prices. Here it is the variance in rent prices that is unexplained by the structural and locational attributes of an apartment. Most importantly, it helps our convolutional neural network from the second step not to learn the already available data from the known features. So in the second step, convolutional neural network employs or suggested prices to predict the floor plan sentiment, which is here the rent price after we control for the set structural and locational characteristics. The entire model is illustrated at the bottom with the raw data on the left side and the conclusion on the right side. Going into more detail, we follow established literature where residuals are used as a proxy for the proportion of the unexplained variance in the dependent variable and which is explained by the known sources. So here we use a hedonic regression to calculate the variance in apartment costs unexplained by structural and locational features. Formally, it is represented by the formula on the left, where y is a logarithm of my strand, beta zero is an intercept, cij are structured attributes, and epsilon is an error term. Then we can use the logarithm my strand and an estimate of the logarithm my strand to get the residual. Once again, this is the adjusted price that is used in stage two. And this makes sure that neural network does not merely learn or predict easily observable and available data. Going to the floor plan sentiment extraction and our neural network, we use a pre-trained exception, that exception network that was trained on the image net. So it was used for classification. Since we wanted to output continuous variable for the floor plan sentiment, we removed the top layer and substituted it with average pooling, followed by a number of hidden layers that are fully connected with real activation, and finally ending with a single output neuron that extracts the desired continuous variable with linear activation. For the hidden layers, we use the amount of layers and neurons as hyperparameters and they were modified and fine-tuned using grid search and five-fold cross-validation. With the floor plans, we also had to use some preprocessing techniques to cut, crop, and normalize them with accordance of the exception specifications. Then we used online documentation to increase the amount of data available for the training. And here we employed mirroring and rotation by a number of radians. Once again, you can see the entire model schematically represented at the bottom of the page. With that, we move to the results. First, we investigate the extent to which automated visual analysis can enhance real estate appraisal on online real estate markets. Here, we study hedonic pricing value of the floor plans in a hedonic regression model employing log linear transformations. Once again, this is actively used methodology from the real estate markets, and it allows us to study not only the relationships, but also the sizes of the effects. On the right-hand side, you can see the standardized parameter estimates and 95% confidence intervals for the two highlighted models. In blue is the model without the floor plans, and in red is the model with the floor plans. By incorporating the floor plan sentiment into our model, we reduce the number the unexplained variance in our dependent variable, which is indicated by the increased adjusted R squared from 0 0.622 to 0 0.697. Additionally, archaic information criterion also decreases by more than 10, indicating that the model with the floor plans is preferable from the two. Floor plan sentiment is statistically significant at the 1% level, and to put it into numbers, an increase in one standard deviation of floor plan sentiment is estimated to increase the rent price by 13.65%. Then we examine whether floor plans are useful in regard of out of sample prediction of rent prices. Hedonic prices or hedonic models are not constrained by linear regressions and can be used in conjunction with machine learning algorithms and deep neural networks. 
At the bottom of the page, you can see a results table for out of sample prediction performance for rent per meter squared for three models log linear regression, cat boost, and deep neural networks. Out of sample prediction performance was calculated using five fold cross validation and resulted in statistically significant improvement for all considered out of sample metrics. To illustrate it with our best performing model, deep neural network with floor plan, floor plans yields 10.56% lower mean squared error and 4.21% lower mean absolute error. And similar improvements are seen for other considered models. Once again, let me illustrate with an example. On the left-hand side, you have an example of an apartment with a positive price correction. And on the right-hand side, you have an apartment that resulted in a negative price correction, meaning that when we introduced the floor plan on the left, it bumped a predicted price upwards closer to the real actual price. As with the previous example, we once again see a similar picture. Floor plan on the left opens to a spacious living room, has access to the balcony from multiple spaces, and has small secluded area on the sides. When you enter, you are greeted by a large room. And on the floor plan on the right, that is not the case. First of all, the only balcony is small and once again only accessible from the farmost point from the entrance through a long corridor and through the entire room. Additionally, it is segmented in the same apartments or in the same rooms, each of which is connected by the said small and crept corridor. Overall, this wouldn't make an impression of a good floor plan. So what are the results? First of all, we quantified the hedonic value of the floor plans and established the link between the visual design and the real estate prices. Then we showed that floor plan visual design does indeed have significant explanatory power regarding rent prices, and that harnessing floor plans results in up to 10.56% lower out of sample prediction error of rent prices, which leads to direct implication for online real estate platforms and investors and alike. Currently, on online real estate platforms, floor plans are delegated to a small section, usually at the very bottom of the page. By showing the effects that floor plans have on explanatory and predictive performance, we hope that the floor plans will now be more prominently displayed on the pages, or if possible, even made mandatory during the upload of an apartment. Second, our results of our work can be used to suggest a price for the person who wants to rent or sell an apartment. Alternatively, the prediction of the model can be shown alongside the price that was selected by the seller to better anchor the buyer and to make market more transparent. For the investors, it's a similar situation where lower prediction error can improve their investment portfolios. For the future research, an interesting approach would be to apply to different marketplaces and locations. Currently, our study only concerns Berlin and Germany, but should be easily extensible to any real estate marketplace. And second, it would be interesting to study the hedonic value of different floor plan layouts and or different floor plan features. Currently, we are focused on the latter. We are combining deep neural networks and OpenCV to extract particular features of the floor plan and use them in the hedonic regression directly. That brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm looking forward to your questions.